I would like to invite Ms. Bonnie Learn, Assistant Registry Manager of the company's registry, to begin the session on points to note for applicants, holders of TCSP license. Ms. Learn, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining this year's webinar organized by the company's registry for the TCSP sector. In the first part of my presentation, I would like to share with you the points to note for applicants or holders of trust or company service provider licenses. I will then briefly introduce some of the amendments in the revised guideline on compliance of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing requirements for TCSPs, which came into effect in June 2023. And finally, I will share with you some of the common deficiencies identified during interviews and inspections with applicants and licensees. Now let's have a quick review on the TCSP licensing regime, which has been commenced on the 1st of March 2018. Under the TCSP licensing regime, unless exempted, any person who carries on or wishes to carry on a trust or company service business in Hong Kong is required to apply for a license and satisfy a fit and proper test before they can provide trust or company services as a business in Hong Kong. Any person who carries on a trust or company service business in Hong Kong without a license commits an offence and is liable on conviction to a fine up to 100,000 Hong Kong dollars and imprisonment up to six months. Part 5A of the Anti-Money Laundering and Counter-Terrorist Financing Ordinance, CAP 615, that's the AMLO, provides for the regulation of trust or company service providers. And the company's registry is responsible for the administration of the licensing regime for TCSPs. The registrar has published three guidelines for the TCSP sector to let them have a clear understanding of the licensing regime for TCSPs. They are the guideline on licensing of trust or company service providers, that's called the licensing guideline. And the second guideline is the guideline on compliance of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing requirements for trust or company service providers. This guideline for is issued by the registrar pursuant to Section 7 of the AMLO to provide guidance of, for TCSP licensees for the compliance with the provisions of Schedule 2 to the AMLO. It sets out the relevant customer due diligence, that's the CDD, and record-keeping requirements prescribed in the AMLO. The AML CTF guideline for TCSPs was revised in 2023 and came into effect from June 2023. And the third guideline is the guideline on imposition of pecuniary penalty. Regarding the application for a TCSP license, the following person will be subject to the fit and proper test. For an applicant, that is an individual carrying on business as a sole proprietor, will be the individual and each ultimate owner. For an applicant, that is a partnership, will be each partner and each ultimate owner. And for an applicant, that is a corporation, will be each director, including the alternate director, and each ultimate owner. Pursuant to Section 53B of the AMLO, the following persons are exempted from the licensing requirement, including the fit and proper test. And they are the accounting professional, that is a certified public accountant as defined in the professional accountant's ordinance, or CPA practicing, a corporate practice, or a CPA firm as defined in the Accounting and Financial Reporting Council ordinance, and the second type is the legal professional, that is a solicitor or a foreign lawyer as defined in the legal practitioner's ordinance. Third type is the authorized institution as defined in the banking ordinance. A licensed corporation as defined in the securities and futures ordinance that operates a trust or company service business in Hong Kong 
that is ancillary to the corporation's principal business. The last type is the person of a class or description prescribed by the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury by regulation. Now below are the licensing requirements for TCSPs. First one is a person needs to apply for a TCSP license before carrying on a trust or company service business in Hong Kong by submitting the form TCSP1. And if a TCSP licensee would like to continue to carry on trust or company service business in Hong Kong after the expiry of its license, then it is required to apply for the renewal of its license at least 60 days before the expiry of the license by submitting Form TCSP2. If a TCSP licensee would like to add an ultimate owner or a partner or a director who is subject to the fit and proper test, then it needs to obtain prior approval from the registrar before adding the ultimate owner or partner or director by submitting the Form TCSP3. And a TCSP licensee has to notify the registrar of a change in its particulars within one month beginning on the date on which the change takes place by submitting Form TCSP6. And if a licensee intends to cease its trust or company service business, it needs to notify the registrar by submitting Form TCSP7 before the intended date of cessation. Now, I would like to provide more details on uh, the different types of licensing requirements. Now, for the uh, key points to note for applying for a TCSP license, please remember not to amends, uh, commence any trust or company service business unless a license is granted. And also, please ensure to submit a valid business registration certificate that is, the business registration certificate number in the middle should be 000, but not the branch registration certificate. There's the certificate number in the middle is 001 or 002, etc., as one of the supporting documents. And also, please provide the information of ultimate owner, but not the shareholder. You may refer to paragraph 4.3 of the licensing guideline for the definition of ultimate owner. And the applicant should appoint at least one compliance officer, that's CO, and one uh, mon uh, money laundering reporting officer, that's MLRO, and keep the appointment records as well as the responsibilities of the CO and MLRO. And please ensure that the CO and MLRO are normally based in Hong Kong. And please also remember to keep a copy of the completed application form for record and future reference. Regarding the renewal of TCSP license, a TCSP licensees must submit the applications for renewal at least 60 days before the expiry of their licenses. There is no grace period, and licensees have to apply for a new license if they miss the deadline for the renewal of the license. As a large number of TCSP licenses will be due to expire in 2024, so please ensure to submit the renewal applications before the deadline. Not only licensees may apply for renewal of their licenses three to four months before their license is uh, due to expire. Uh, we will issue reminder emails to licensees four months before the expiry of their licenses. So please check your email accounts, including those spam mail or junk mail boxes, in order not to miss the email and the deadline. And please also note that it is the responsibility of the licensees to submit the renewal applications before the deadline. Please ensure that the information you fill in the form TCSP2 should be consistent with the records previously provided to the registrar. You may need to review the licensee's records first before submitting the renewal application. And if uh, changes in the particulars of the licensee or its relevant persons have been taken place, please submit forms TCSP6 to notify the registrar of the changes. And the licensee should also ensure that prior approval for adding ultimate owner or partner or director has been granted by the registrar. 
and upon making the application for renewal of license successfully, your current license remains in force unless your application is withdrawn or the current license is revoked or suspended or until it is renewed and of if it is not renewed until the decision not to renew takes effect. Now, uh, TCSP license is usually valid for three months, uh, three years, sorry. If you wish to continue to carry on your trust or company service business upon the expiry of your license, you must make an application for renewal of license at least 60 days before the license is due to expire. And unless uh, the application for renewal of the license is withdrawn or your current license is revoked or suspended by the registrar, your current license will remain in force until it is renewed or if it is not renewed, then until the decision not to renew takes effect. As you can see in the PowerPoint, if you have successfully submitted the renewal application, even your current license has expired before the renewal of license is granted, your current license still remains in force. And on the other hand, if you have failed to submit the application for renewal at least 60 days before the expiry of your license, then you need to apply for a new TCSP license if you still wish to carry on a trust or company service business in Hong Kong after the expiry of your current license. And the TCSP registry will process your application for a new TCSP license and a new license will be granted to you if your application is successful. The new TCSP license will bear a new license number. If your license has expired before a new license is granted, you must cease carrying on your business, uh, the trust or company service business, before the new license is granted. Otherwise, you will commit an offense of carrying on a trust or company service business in Hong Kong without a license, and you will be liable on conviction to a fine up to 100,000 Hong Kong dollars and imprisonment for six months. Please be aware that the registrar has imposed licensing conditions upon the granting or the renewal of the TCSP licenses. And they are, the licensee should appoint a CO or a MLO during the term of the license and should ensure that a new CO or MLRO is appointed within seven days where a vacancy occurs in the two posts. The licensee should put in place adequate and proper anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing policies, procedures and controls, as evidenced by policy statements or other written documents. And the licensee should provide information relating to his business during the term of the license, as may be required by the registrar, and such information should be provided within such time as the registrar may specify. The registrar may take disciplinary action against a TCSP licensee if it fails to comply with the licensing conditions. If a TCSP licensee would like to add an ultimate owner or a partner or a director who is subject to the fit and proper test, it needs to obtain prior approval from the registrar before adding the relevant person. And the licensee can submit uh, the following forms and documents together with the correct fees electronically in person or by post to the TCSP registry, which is the form TCSP3, form TCSP4 and or form TCSP5 and other supporting documents and the fee. Now the following are some of the inquiries relating to the application for approval to become an uh, ultimate owner, a partner, or a director of a TCSP licensee. For instance, uh, if the licensee would like to appoint a director who is subject to the fit and proper test, then the licensee has to submit a form TCSP3 to apply for the approval for the proposed person to become a director. And after approval is given by the registrar, the licensee then can proceed to arrange for the uh, approved person to become the director. And after the appointment is made, 
Then the licensee should submit a form ND2A to the company's registry within 15 days, and also a form TCSB6 to the TCSB registry within one month. And you may also refer to the uh, answers of the following questions relating to the inquiries on the fit and proper tests and also the addition of an ultimate owner uh, owing to the uh, allotment and also transfer of shares. Now, regarding the notification of changes in the particulars of the licensees, uh, if there is any change in the particulars of the licensee or its uh, relevant persons, then the licensee needs to notify the registrar within one month beginning on the date on which the change takes place. The licensee can submit a form TCSB6 together with the supporting documents electronically, in person or by post to the TCSP registry. And below are the types of changes which a TCSP licensee must notify the registrar. And they include the changes in the particulars of the licensee. For example, the licensee's business name, business address, business email address, etc. And the changes of the licensee's ultimate owner, partner, director, CEO, or MLRO. Changes in the particulars of the licensee's ultimate owner, partner, director, CEO, or MLRO and changes in the fit and proper status of persons who have undergone the fit and proper tests. Please also note that uh, the licensee has to notify the registrar if the licensee, which is a corporation, is in liquidation or a receiver has been appointed. The following are some of the inquiries relating to the notification of changes in the particulars of the licensee. Uh, for example, for uh, any change in the company secretary of the licensee, you do not have to notify the TCSB registry, but you have to submit the form and D2A to notify the company's registry. And also, uh, if there is a change in the company name and the business address of the licensee, uh, after you have uh, submitted the form TCSB6 to notify the TCSB registry, uh, we will not issue a new license to the licensee, but the new company name and the new business address will be shown in the register of TCSB licensees for public inspection. Uh, we have noticed that uh, quite often a TCSB licensee has incorrectly thought that when it has already filed notifications to report the changes as required under the company's ordinance, then it has also fulfilled the requirement under the AMLO. Now we would like to remind all the TCSB licensees that they need to comply with the filing requirements both under the company's ordinance and the AMLO, and they should file different notifications to the company's registry and the TCSB registry respectively. If a TCSB licensee fails to comply with the filing requirements under the AMLO, it will be liable to prosecution or is subject to disciplinary action by the registrar. If a TCSB licensee intends to cease its trust or company service business, it needs to notify the registrar before the intended date of cessation by submitting the Form D TCSB 7 and other supporting documents electronically, in person, or by post to the TCSP registry. And here are some inquiries relating to the notification of cessation of trust or company service business, uh, such as uh, if the company is going to apply for the registration, then the licensee also needs to submit a form TCSP 7 to notify the registrar of the intention to cease uh, trust or company service business, and also the intended date of cessation. And if the TCSP 7 is accepted, then uh, the TCSP registry will um, issue a notification informing the licensee. Now, 
Next, I would like to briefly introduce some of the amendments in the revised AMLCTF guideline for TCSPs, which has come into effect in June 2023. With the provisions of the Anti-Money Laundering and Counter-Terrorist Financing Amendment Ordinance 2022, which address a number of miscellaneous and technical issues under the AMNL, has come into effect on the 1st of June 2023, the existing AML CTF guideline for TCSPs had been revised, which covered the following amendments. Now, the amendment on the definition of beneficiary owner in relation to a trust, updating the definition of politically exposed person, that is BEP, and the introduction of former PEP, recognized digital identification system to verify a customer's identity where the client is not physically present, requirements of employee screening and independent audit function, professional company secretary is included as one of the suitable persons for certified verification of identity documents, the record keeping requirement for occasional transaction, risk assessment in relation to new services, new business practices, and the use of new technologies, and the counterfinancing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. While my colleague, Ms. Christy Ill, Senior Solicitor of the Company's Registry, will go into details on some of these amendments in her presentation later on, I would like to provide more details regarding the requirements of employee screening procedures and also the independent audit function. Through employee screening procedures, TCSP licensees should develop and implement policies, procedures, and control on employee screening. And they should also have appropriate screening procedures to satisfy the integrity of their new employees. And the uh, employee screening procedures should be conducted both at the recruitment stage and on an ongoing basis. And regarding the independent audit function, TCSP licensees should regularly review the adequacy and effectiveness of the AMLCTF systems. The independent audit function can be performed by internal staff of the licensees or by external third parties with sufficient expertise. Please note that CO and MLRO cannot perform the function. And the frequency and extent of review should be commensurate with the nature, size, and complexity of the licensee's business and the money laundering and uh, terrorist financing risk. For the details on the requirements of employee screening procedures and independent audit function, you may refer to the relevant FAQs on the TCSP website. For the enforcement of the TCSP licensing regime, we have established an enforcement system to ensure that TCSP licensees comply with the licensing and the AMLCTF requirements. We may conduct site inspections against TCSP licensees, and they may be in the form of surprise inspections or inspections by appointment. During the inspections, we will also interview relevant persons and inspect the records and documents. We may also invite the relevant persons of the licensees or applicants to attend our interviews. Moreover, we would examine the various documents submitted by the TCSP licensees, including the forms SIS2, which are related to the AML and CDF policies, procedures and measures taken by the TCSP licensees. At the same time, we would also consider intelligence provided by other law enforcement agencies and conduct investigation when necessary to ensure that the licensees have fully complied with the licensing and AML CTF requirements. Now regarding the form SIS2, please note that uh, the form will be sent to all TCSP licensees for complete, uh, completion throughout email or letter as an annual exercise. And if a TCSP licensee fails to provide information before the deadline, 
it will constitute a breach of licensing condition three, and disciplinary action may be taken by the registrar under section 53Z of the MLO. Depending on the nature and seriousness of the contravention or the non-compliance, the following actions may be taken against the licensees by the registrar. For minor contraventions, advisory or warning letter may be issued to the licensees. And for more serious contraventions, the registrar may consider to take disciplinary actions against the licensees, which include public reprimand the licensees, order the licensees to take remedial action to ratify the non-compliance, or even impose a pecuniary penalty of not exceeding 500,000 Hong Kong dollars against the licensees. If the registrar considers the relevant persons of the licensees are no longer fit and proper to carry her own or associate with trust or company service business, she may consider to suspend or even revoke the license or not to renew the license. And if any person has committed an offense under the MO, we may take appropriate action to prosecute as well. Now you may refer to the enforcement section on the TCSP website for the details on the highlights of prosecution and disciplinary cases. We would also like to take the opportunity to share with you some of the common deficiencies identified during the interviews or inspections with the applicants for TCSP licenses and TCSP licensees. Firstly, regarding the policy statement, it is noted that some of the licensees have not established their own written policy statements. And sometimes some licensees just copy the policy statements of other regulatory bodies without preparing their own or tailor-made policy statements. And it is also noted that uh, the following areas or details are sometimes found omitted in the written policy statements of the TCSP licensees, including the employee screening procedures, independent audit function, procedures and documents required for CDD, screening of customers against the list of sanctioned destinations and terrorists, and the screening of beneficial owners of customers on PEPs. The following deficiencies are also found during the inspections on the documents and records uh, provided by the TCSB licensees. For example, on the risk assessment, uh, some of the licensees are unable to demonstrate that uh, they have conducted risk assessments on their customers and they do not keep the risk assessment records or results. For the customer screening, uh, no screening on the customers against the updated list of sanctioned destinations and terrorists, or they have not conducted as soon as practicable after the relevant lists are updated. And sometimes so the licensees have found there is no screening on the beneficial owners of customers on the PEPs, or they do not keep the screening records or results. And then for the customer not physically present for identification, uh, the licensee, they do not uh, have other additional measures or enhanced due diligence, EDD, uh, conducted against the customers except online interviews with snapshot of his or her picture holding the identification document. Uh, please also note that if a TCSB licensee considers to mitigate the uh, money laundering or terrorist financing risk by obtaining copies of documents that have been certified by a suitable certifier, then it should note the types of suitable persons for certifying the verification of identity documents and also the details on the certification of the documents. Now you may refer to paragraph 5.32 of the revised MLCTF guideline for TCSPs for details. Now on the part of the ongoing monitoring, sometimes the licensees are not aware of the changes in the particulars of their customers and also their beneficial owners. And or sometimes it is unable to demonstrate that the information of their customers are up to date and relevant. 
And for the person proposed to act on behalf of the customer, the licensee should not uh, have any verification on the authority of persons purport to act on behalf of the customers who are corporations, and they do not obtain the authorization documents from the corporate customers. Now we hope that the TCSB licensees can be aware of the deficiencies mentioned above and avoid making the same mistakes again. Now below are the highlights on the key updates in 2023. Now all TCSB licensees should have returned the duly completed forms SIS2 for 2022 to the TCSB registry by the 19th of June 2023. And as I've mentioned before, the Amnor Amendment Ordinance 2022 already came into op uh, operation on the 1st of June 2023. And the revised AML CTF guideline for TCSPs also came into effect on the same day. And the form TCSP1 SIS2A was revised and came into effect on the 14th of September 2023. And lastly, we would like to remind all applicants and licensees that the forms TCSP1, TCSP2, TCSP3, TCSP5, and TCSP6 will be revised and put in use on the 27th of December 2023 upon the implementation of the Unique Business Identifier, that's the UBI. You may visit our website at www.tcsp.cr.gov.hk for more information and updates on the TCSP licensing regime. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.